the cost of all groceries because this will be prices times the quantities you buy, but such that uh, the total content in the food of each of the vitamins uh, is uh, larger or equal than daily allowance. Okay, so, and of course, always uh, with the uh, additional constraint that the variables be positive. Okay, so this is, this, these two are the forms of uh, uh, linear programming, uh, linear programs that uh, your solvers uh, take. Right? You have to specify the vector uh, of the constraints and uh, the matrix of for the sorry the of the vector of uh, uh, for the objective right multipliers of your variables and these are the corresponding uh, inequalities that are the constraints uh, and uh, this is how usually how you enter the uh, the problem into, into Yes. C and A should be swapped, right? Sorry? C should be the, uh, the content of vitamin J in post-staple I, right? Uh, so C are the prices, uh, right? Because what we want to do is to minimize, let's see, where is it? Uh, uh, what we want to do, remember, is, uh, when did they write this? Uh, or you all should be here it is uh, right so uh, the total cost is uh, if I buy x1 amount of food 1 x2 amount of food 2 up to x20 uh, amount of the food 20 then the total cost is uh, x1 p1 plus x2 p2 plus x20 uh, p20. And aij is the content of, uh, 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 of uh, let's see, how did I, yeah, so uh, in the first index tells you which vitamin it is, and uh, no, let's see. What have I done uh, here? This would be uh, the <coughs> so right. The first is the type of food, and the second index in A is the content of the vitamin in that food, right? So um, say for broccoli, we have that A1 of vitamin uh, 7 is this much in the food of type 2 content of vitamin 7 is this much and when you, multi when you buy X2 amount of such a, a food the total content of vitamin 7 in that food is this product and when you total overall foods uh, this should exceed the daily allowance of the, uh, for that vitamin. Okay, this is the standard form. Now, you can see that uh, in a lot of examples, you know, you want to allow variables to take both positive and negative uh, values, but this prevents them from taking uh, both positive and negative values and we require that all the variables are positive. So it will take a little hack how to transform a problem that is, uh, that uh, uh, would, uh, would ask you f to allow both positive and negative values, uh, how to still write it in this standard form as your solver uh, would uh, require you. Okay, so let's get a practical, a numerical example and see 
uh, to ex in order to explain how such problems are solved. So you have the notes uh, uh, that are fairly detailed. Please read them carefully because this is <coughs> so on the final I might give you uh, a problem that you have to formulate uh, to formulate it as a linear programming problem possibly with some that you will have to do some small tweak to force it into that form. Huh? So here is a simple numerical example that is uh, worked out uh, in the lecture notes. Uh, so assume that we want to maximize uh, uh, we want to maximize Uh, 3x1, that's your objective, plus x2, uh, plus 2x3, subject to and these are the constraints, x1 plus x2 plus 3x3 is smaller or equal than 13, then 2x1 plus, uh, say, 2x2 plus 5x3 is smaller or equal than 24, and then 4x1 plus x2 plus 5x3 oops sorry 4x1 plus 2x3 is uh, smaller or equal than 36 and of course x1 x2 and x3 should be bigger or equal than 0 So this is a typical, simple, linear programming uh, problem. <coughs> These markers are pretty pathetic. They dry out really quickly. Okay. Let's see uh, from these inequalities, uh, what can you conclude about the value of the objective? Let's call this uh, uh, f of x, right? It's a vector x, three coordinates. What can we conclude? Well, notice. If I sum up these two equations, uh, what do I get? Uh, I get 3x1 uh, plus 3x2 uh, plus 8x3 uh, is uh, smaller or equal than 54. But notice now, our objective, so all the variables have to be positive, okay? But the coefficients of our objective are smaller or equal than the coefficients of this, of the left-hand side here, right? <coughs> so <coughs> you can conclude that f of x which is 3x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 uh, is smaller or equal uh, than this, right? 3x1 plus 
x2 uh, plus um, 8 x3. And we saw that this is smaller or equal than 54. Why is this inequality true? Well, you have on both sides 3x1. You have less. You Here you have 3x2, which is larger or equal than x2 because x2 is positive. Here you have 2x3, and here you have xx3. So this is, again, bigger or equal than this because x3 is positive. And voila, we got that our objective cannot exceed 54. Right? Just by a simple addition of these two. Can we get any tighter bounds? So, right? Well, instead of doing a guesswork, you can try to do it in a systematic way. You can say, let me multiply the first equation by some unknown, some parameter y1. So let's uh, try to get a sharper uh, upper bound. Uh, so let's take the first equation and multiply it by y1. So we will have x1 plus x2 plus 3x3 times some factor y1. That should be smaller or equal than um, uh, 30y1. And then I will try to choose cleverly y1 uh, so that when I make the corresponding linear combination, I get a tighter bound than this one that was obtained just from the first two by simply, you know, multiply this by one and this by one and sum them up. Well, maybe we can do better. So then you say, okay, let me multiply the second equation by y2. So I will have 2x1 plus 2x2 uh, plus 5x3. It will be smaller or equal than 24y2. Right? And then the last one I can multiply by some unknown factor y3 and get 4x1 plus uh, x2 plus 2x3 is smaller or equal than uh, 36y3. And now I'm summing up the corresponding sides. Uh, what do I get? Uh, well, I get, uh, if I pull out x1, then uh, the factor in front of x1 will be y1, so if I sum them up, will be y1 plus 2y2 uh, plus 4y3 times x1, right? So I'm just multiplying this and then summing up and just uh, taking out the common factor, which is x1. So I have a, a y1, then I have 2y2 and plus 4y3 of x1. Plus, similarly, I'll have for x2, I'll have y1 plus 2y2 plus uh, y3 times x2. And plus, finally, I'll have, uh, let's see, 3y1 uh, plus 5y2. Uh, 5y2 plus 2y3 times x3, right? And this should be, will be smaller or equal than some of the corresponding sides. Uh, so 30y1 uh, 
plus 24y2 plus 36y3. Now, I want to choose y's so that I can mimic this trick, right? So I want my objective to be smaller than um, so that the corresponding coefficients, so now let me continue here, I uh, want to choose uh, y's such that the corresponding coefficients in front of x1, just like here, are larger or equal than the corresponding coefficient in the, uh, in the uh, objective. So such that uh, y1 plus 2y2 plus 4y3 is bigger or equal, let's put it here, bigger or equal than 3. Right? Then I want this to be larger than the corresponding uh, coefficient here, which will be y1 plus uh, 2y2 plus, uh, plus y3. I want it to be bigger than the coefficient here, which is just 1. So these three is this one here, and this one is corresponds to this, and finally the third one, I want it uh, to be small, uh, larger than the corresponding coefficient in front of x3. So I'll have 3y1 plus uh, 5y2, plus um, 2y3, I want it to be bigger than 2, which is just this coefficient here. Why do I want this inequality? Well, if I have this inequality, then this will be larger or equal than 3x1 plus x2 plus 2x3, right? So I'll have this smaller or equal than that. And now the goal is I want to make this as small as possible because I want to produce as tight bound as possible, better than this 54. So let's do it on this side. Look, this is probably not the most exciting thing in the world, but it is uh, extraordinarily useful. And really, every computer scientist should know very basic optimization uh, techniques, because you might need uh, to, in fact, uh, uh, to use this linear programming in a variety of uh, setups that uh, in, practic in practice. So, um, you know, sometimes things are pretty because they are kind of elegant and simple. Sometimes things are pretty because they are bloody useful. Right? And, um, it's really pretty straightforward what's happening. So we now have this, and we want to minimize this. So we want as tight upper bound as possible, i.e. We want uh, to minimize uh, 
uh, th this expression, which is 30 by 1 plus 24 y2 plus 36 uh, y3, right? But in order to be able to have this inequality, we need all of these constraints, new constraints or y's to be true. So subject to constraints and then the constraints over there, which is y1 plus 2y2 um, plus 4y3. You want these to be bigger or equal than 3. And then uh, you also want y1 plus 2y2 plus uh, y3 to be bigger or equal than 1. And finally, 3y1 plus uh, uh, 5y2 plus uh, 2y3. You want this to be bigger or equal than 2. So let's see what we got. So remember, the original problem was this one. Maximize this constraint, I'm uh, sorry, this objective subject to this constraint. Then we try to figure out how to cleverly combine the constraints to get a sharp upper bound. For example, if you just sum these two, so y1 is equal to uh, uh, 1, y2 is equal to uh, 1, and y3 is equal to 0, because we are just adding the first two, gives you constraint 54. And we are now asking ourselves, well, what can I multiply? What can be the multipliers of these guys so that when this sums up, I get as tight value as possible and the coefficients in front of each variable larger or equal than the corresponding coefficients here. And so this maximization, sorry, yeah, maximization problem, we only managed to reduce it to a corresponding minimization problem subject also to linear constraints. Yes? The reason you sum up the first one and the second one is to get an estimate of the other one. Yes. So then wouldn't the final one be a better estimate? Just, just that one. Uh, let's see. What, that's a good point. Let's see. So 4x1, that's bigger. This is, yep, you are right. So here is another. So, uh, so let's do here uh, examples. Uh, so y1 equals to 1, y2 equals to 1, y3 equals to 0, yields uh, estimate uh, that uh, 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 that f of x is smaller or equal than 54. And as you just notice, so that's first, second example, y1 equals to 0, y2 equals to 0, and uh, y3 equals to 1 yields even better. Estimate f of x is smaller or equal then, uh, then, then uh, uh, what do we have? 36, right? So these are kind of trivial choices uh, of y's. And now our question is maybe there is some tricky choice of y's that can reduce even further. 
that is even less than 36. But this problem of getting a sharp, sharper upper bound suddenly turns out that it's a linear program itself, right? And this program is called the dual program for the original, right? And if the problem is denoted by P, uh, this is original uh, prog problem, uh, then P star is uh, its dual, right? It's how is it obtained? Just by asking yourself, what can be my multipliers so that I can, in fact, make a conclusion like this to compare the two objectives, and yet uh, the corresponding right-hand side in total are as small as uh, possible. So it seems that this idea led us nowhere because all what we accomplished was to reduce one problem to an equally hard other problem that is dual. But that's not actually the case. Because what the main method of solving a linear problem does, it actually simultaneously solves both problems, right? And what happens is exactly, and we will see that this can be rigorously formulated, what happens, what does this remind you? So you see, uh, the solution will be achieved, so you have this inequality between uh, uh, the two constraints. And one can show that when you maximize this, uh, that will be precisely the value, the corresponding y's will have the value that minimizes this. Uh, so max of this uh, will be smaller, will be precisely equal to the mean of this. Uh, does this remind you of something? So maximum of this expression will coincide with the minimum of the dual expression. When did we have that max of something was equal to mean of something else? Max flow mean cut. And in fact, max flow mean cut is just a special case of this phenomenon because as we will see, uh, you can in fact formulate max flow mean cut as a linear programming problem, right? So, um, so, 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 uh, this is a very kind of typical and uh, in, in convex optimization in general, something similar happens that you have primal, primal problem and it's dual problem and you kind of systematically try to reduce the gap between them until they become very close and which you proclaim that you achieved the, the optimum, right? When this is negligibly close to uh, this gap, yeah? So this is uh, the bottom line, the, the idea that uh, is behind the simplex algorithm. So let us see, in fact, on, an, on that example, how simplex goes about to solve this problem. So this is the idea. So we have to keep in looking for values of x that minimize this expression, right? We have to 
keep these constraints satisfied. So this should be smaller than 30, which means the difference between 30 and this has to be um, uh, has to be positive. So idea. Let me use the red one. Introduce the slack variables. Let's see in the notes which letters I used for the slack variables. Uh, I Okay, x is uh, x for x. So that will be, I'll introduce variable x4, which is equal to 30 minus, and then x1 plus 2x2 plus uh, 3x3, right? And I know that x4 should be bigger or equal than 0. Because x4 is this difference, and we want this difference to be non-negative. Because this should be smaller than 30, i.e. 30 minus this should be positive. And similarly, we introduce slack variable x5. Now, why is it called slack? Because these guys, this linear combination should never exceed 30, and it tells you how much uh, space you have to increase this uh, and not to exceed 30, right? So it tells you how much slack you have between 30 and the value of this expression. So x5 will be 24 minus uh, 2x1 plus uh, 2x2 uh, and uh, plus 5x3 and finally x6 will be um, uh, 36 minus and then you will have uh, 4x1 plus uh, x2 plus 2x3, right? Uh, and uh, the assumption that all variables x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and x6, they all have to be bigger or equal than zero, right? So nothing, these are just new variables um, and uh, the assumption that they are positive uh, is equivalent to these inequalities being satisfied. But yes? Here? Yeah. Let's see, x1 plus, oh yeah, you are right, sorry. Thank you very much. Plus x2 plus 3x3. Right, so we reduced inequalities to equalities. Now, it just happens here, right? Okay, so uh, any six, uh, any vector of length six, right? that satisfies uh, all, any axis that satisfy these equalities and this inequality are called a feasible solution. So feasible solution is not something necessarily that uh, uh, maximizes uh, this. So, and we have to maximize uh, whatever we had there, 3x1 plus 
uh, x2 plus uh, 2x3. So something is a feasible solution, not if it maximizes this, just if it satisfies the, these equalities and this inequality, which is equivalent to these initial inequalities being satisfied. So that's called a feasible solution. And it just happens here that uh, uh, x1, x2, and x3 equal to 0, in fact, satisfy all of the uh, constraints. Because if uh, they are all 0, then x4 is 30, x5 is 24, x6 is 36. And so, and that's all non-negative, right? And of course, the value of the objective, uh, let's call it uh, uh, c, then c will be equal to 0 for uh, this particular value. So now we do something very logical. We said, OK, this is one point. How can I increase the value of the objective? Well, I can try to increase the value of any of these variables. Right? Any variable that has a positive coefficient in front, if I increase x, uh, it will increase the value of the objective. So let's try to, so now we want, uh, let's try to increase C by increasing X1. So tell me now, how large can be X1 that, so that this is still satisfied? Looking from the first equation, what is definitely the largest value of X1 that will not violate positiveness of these guys. So how large can x1 be at most? What it definitely cannot exceed? Huh? 30, right? Because if x1 is bigger, so 